the non-destructive high bit depth image processing engine that Game 2.10 later is using. And the first tiny little bit about me. I come from Norway, which has mountains, sometimes winter, and I like to stay in a cabin in a forest in the mountains there. And I've been programming for quite a long while. Uh, this is um, part of my student work back in 2002 when I was experimenting with uh, graphics. This is before, before I got involved in GIMP. Um, and it was an initial attempt of looking different ways of doing color correction for a video. And in good tradition with procrastinating hackers and software developers, I also brought my own UI toolkit. And looking back on it now, I also suspect that I did not draw uppercase characters for this bitmap font. You can see that actually everything is lowercase, and it's probably because I never even drew the characters. So this is 2002, and in this project I was doing here, I also wrote the GIMP plugin, which is how I got involved with the GIMP developers. And for um, people who are familiar with GIMP's splash screens in history, this is how GIMP started back then, what it looked like. And uh, this is the times when uh, the resolution on your computers, you're actually not, you're actually doing pixel art. You're signing individual pixel by pixel anti alias mm -hmm. and um, doing hacks for going. So the, things have moved on since then. And I was not happy about GIMP at this time. Um, it was quite good, but there was loads and loads of room for improvement. And uh, having decided to spend time on doing that uh, is why I'm kind of here today talking. Um, uh, already back in 2002, a plan had been in place for a couple of years to replace the engine inside GIMP with a graph or node-based system. That is where you have black boxes that you connect with pipes. Some boxes load images, others do other things to them. Um, and uh, this is much more common now, but the idea was put in place by a Hollywood studio called Rhythm and Hughes already back in 1999 2000 that this is how they would want to do high bit depth and non destructive editing in GIMP. And they have already been working on something they call Film GIMP, uh, which became CinePaint. But said, no, no, this is too messy and too many hacks to maintain, so we have to create a graph based system. This is Im Image Flow, which is one UI that exists for demo and front end. Uh, there are other experiments. This is an experiment that I'm going to discontinue, which was a video editor I uh, was working on a couple of years ago on top of Gaggle. Uh, and I'm working on small different UIs on top of Gaggle to improve Gaggle and make Gaggle ready for GIMP. Because there's this uh, chicken and egg problem going on in that the features of Gaggle need to be ready and working before GIMP is interested in actually adopting them and integrating them. And uh, to actually make features stable and suitable for adoption, they have to they have been tested already. And, uh, that's why there is a need for also like other things using it. Thankfully, also laid out in addition to image flow has been using Gaggle API, so that gives more users and validates that the APIs can do things that I didn't think of the first and second, but maybe only the third and fourth time was considering how APIs will be used. Yet another application that is using Gaggle internally is uh, GNOME Photos. Um, and the history of the project can be seen here in a sense. This is kind of a burn down chart where you see for how long code that has been added in given years have survived. So there's something going on in the beginning. The original code from Rhythm and Hughes, not much of it exists. There's this tiny little band here. So at some point, uh, we started like getting rid of some code and then not much surviving. There has been a year-on-year -year growth of the amount of code and there's quite a few contributors. Uh, each different color in the horizontal band here is a different person who has a git commit in uh, Gaggle over time. And uh, this big pink area is mine and it is shrinking though it's sometimes grown but the overall code base is also 
growing. Gaggle itself is 400,000 lines of code now, and it contains many plugins that have been ported from GIMP that used to be only 8-bit and didn't work that well, that have been now moved to work inside one of these black boxes as a node, where we then preserve that code and contributions also in GIMP. Um, and this is one of the challenges <coughs> with GIMP as well, is that GIMP, because it has had even more contributors than Gaggle over time, uh, it is troublesome if things people have contributed in the past stops working. So uh, Mitch and the core team of GIMP try very, very hard to make scripts continue working and things that used to work uh, to continue working. And uh, this also makes it move somewhat slowly forward. But we are going to talk about Gaggle, which this is an overview of all the operations which are in Gaggle. And it is quite a few. It's many plugins that people recognize from GIMP, but all of these are separate small individual filters with their own bugs or uh, similar as well. So all of them have to be kind of worked out. And I'm gonna skip this one. Uh, this is the old way tests used to be done in Gaggle. Also, when we didn't have a, kind of a UI or real testing, we wrote these XML files, quite long, and, and uh, the very useful thing they have provided us, kind of <coughs> testing point of view, is that each time we add new code or change code in Gaggle, we check that these scary large documents produce the same output, pixel by pixel, or check some of it. Uh, but for testing and debugging, opening up a text editor and editing an XML file like this and having the result, that is like the difference between using Inkscape for, for creating the vector graphics and editing SVGs in a text editor and reloading it in a web browser. Uh, and the reloading in a web browser and editing in a text editor SVG, it kind of works, but you have a very long feedback process and uh, Why does this not behave like I want it to? Mm -hmm. I went full screen. <laughs> so what I'm showing now is the new, simpler way of rigging up a graph with only Gaggle and doing it from the command line. Uh, this example would actually just load the JPEG and spit out uh, pink and uh, not extremely interesting. Uh, if it add two dashes, and then put the name of uh, a node in Gaggle, then uh, we start doing kind of like a graph-based processing. So now we have rigged up that we load the JPEG, pass it through the threshold, and uh, we save it load to the PNG. And if we then start adding another command behind it, and then a word that is the name of a parameter and equals, we can start building up a um, successive chain of commands. Um, Convert mosaic. And one can do more complicated things. So what I've done here is that I took the original image, I passed it through the mosaic filter, and then I passed it through um, an over operation, which is a filter that puts another image on top of parts of the image, and the image I'm putting over it goes in on the auxiliary input on the, the over node. And it is the original image, but I scale it down half on each side and put it on top of the original image. So this way of uh, bringing things up has worked quite well. And uh, some of the core contributors to Gaggle this is the preferred way of expressing bug reports as well, saying that if I set the environment variables to say that I have one core or four threads, I get a different result from running this command, and all of that fits in the actual bug report, and there's no attachments or text or similar. And, and this is also something that people can use uh, in scripts, uh, rather than using Python bindings or similar. The 
the syntax that is used in um, this thing also is available inside GIMP as a filter called Gaggle Graph. And I'm just going to remove everything here. So if I just write threshold, I'm sorry that the font here is quite small, then uh, I'm writing the exact same syntax that was showing on the command line earlier, so now I'm doing it in a live editing here. So threshold, value, and I get this eek builder telling me that something is wrong, it says that there is no such operation, I say value equals 0 0.5 or 3, 2, And uh, one thing I quite enjoy as an example of like things that can be rigged up, and I'm going to show the same thing I did with this auxiliary input and a more complex graph, is if I say it equals foo, so now I say that you save foo, and you want to do a threshold, and, but instead of doing it a fixed value, you want to do a threshold, and there be re-input the original image and then we do a Gaussian blur and we increase I should have used a smaller image for this but um, So what this ends up doing, let's see if I can get all of it to show on the same part of the packet editor there. What this ends up doing is that instead of blurring with a fixed value of 0 0.5 in the whole image, uh, we create a version of the image which is the blurred image, so we have the average of every single pixel or neighborhood of each pixel. So this is kind of a local uh, adaptive thresholding, so the threshold depends on which colors are actually in that part of the image, so it would work out um, <coughs> and yeah, this image is quite large, so with the default settings of Mosaic and Mosaic uh, used to work in the old pixel pushing, the pixel art days of GIMP we don't actually see the filter, so if you zoom in, we end up seeing uh, what this is doing. But okay, um, I'm going to jump out of GIMP again. And here's an example of um, one bug report from one of the uh, big QA contributors to GIMP and Gaggle, Massimo. And, uh, this is not the value or this is just the email I have received, but it's just saying that yeah, these commands produce different results with uh, eight threads or one thread, and it also identifies where the actual problem is. But this is a lot more helpful than um, uh, the way we used to do things. Gaggle used to have a UI before as well. Um, so this is a screenshot of how that used to look at some point. This is how it used to look when we had uh, also spiral curves possible to edit to kind of direct. It had uh, both Bessier handles and uh, other types of curves. Uh, it so happens that the program I'm actually using for a presentation here is also the Gaggle binary. It's, it's an image viewer. I've been doing a little bit of zooming in and out. Um, but I could also write threshold and uh, value equals 0 0.5 and uh, then we get something similar to what we have and uh, I can open up um, and look at uh, got a slightly awkward angle from looking at the screen. Let's just remove the threshold. So I'm going to do basically what we did uh, in 
again. Threshold and we connect this output there and do a Gaussian blur. So with the large radius, <coughs> and stuff like that, and the tricky radius, we have this very, very um, high pass threshold going on. And I'm going to skip the thing I'll play with there and see if I return to it in one of my coming examples. Now I'm going to do another example on top of this and show a way to do something else. So the commands I'm typing, they apply to the active node. So if I have prop focus there, I can say width equals uh, 4,000 and uh, height equals 3,300. Um, but the crop tool also has its own on UI uh, control handles, as does this linear gradient. So I can adjust where those endpoints are. Uh, this is very, very experimental, and um, the way that these on-canvas control tools work is... Um, <coughs> I'm going to open up the linear gradient. Each time this Gecko image viewer editor UI is um, re rendering its frame, it um, <coughs> reinterprets also um, this whole file. Uh, I'm gonna be very evil and just remove the end point so we cannot edit one side of the gradient. And the UI even updates live, so changing the source code uh, changes what the UI is doing. <coughs> I don't have to read, compile, or do any of those parts. And that is interesting, and uh, the UIs I have here, this is a tiny little self-contained file which only is manipulating one node, and I do think that we could do the same thing in GIMP, so that we end up having this tiny small Lua scripts that provide the interactive vector editing on the canvas, that are only manipulating one small part of the graph or, <coughs> let's see, if I, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to try to see it through. I was going to talk about the space invasion, which is the adding of the new RGB spaces to GIMP. I'm gonna skip through there a bit and show another fun thing in this uh, image viewer. The image viewer also can do PDFs. Um, then I get another kind of way of paging up and down in addition to sideways. And how much time do I have left? About a minute. About a minute? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> CMYK is coming. CMYK is actually done in Babel and in Gaggle. And uh, that's the thing they haven't started working on in GIMP, but the other part of the space invasion is still ongoing as we're speaking, and uh, another um, quality testing uh, contributor to GIMP is L Stone, 
Uh, I used to have a bit of a um, strained relationship, um, but now we have turned Elle Stone into a C developer and she's committing to Git patches and she is um, uh, implementing the architecture. Um, that was planned, but was haste in the past, but now it's becoming very, very clear, and we can think we know what we're doing. Um, and I think I'll skip a bit ahead here and show that uh, Gebo can do video as well. And um, uh, this whole presentation that I run here today, uh, the way I've done it is to actually override the order of the files in the folder as well. And I allow files to occur multiple times. So instead of seeing this folder as the place you just put your files, it's actually an edit decision list or a playlist. Uh, I have metadata here for dealing with in the note points of clips, etc. So the killing of this GCut video editor, it was all of that functionality has moved into this image editor. I think we have to stop there. <laughs>